And today that new competitor is still with us. We don't have steam engines in our houses, but we do have lots of electric motors. Look around your house, it's loaded with them. Electric clocks, air conditioners, CD players, VCRs, fans, vacuum cleaners, blenders. And of course, who could forget the electric toothbrush? They are all powered by electric motors. If without it, we wouldn't even be able to sit here and make this interview. It wouldn't be worth getting out of bed unless you wanted to be back in the horse and buggy days. Unlike most engines, which use some kind of combustion to create heat, the electric motor is powered by an entirely different principle. It's based on the fact that when electricity flows through a wire, an electromagnetic field is created, which means you've temporarily turned that wire into a magnet. Turn the electricity off, it's not a magnet anymore. Hook it up the opposite way and its north and south poles reverse. An electric motor does this over and over, using the magnetic force to create motion. What it does is it creates a magnetic field. And it actually drives it, just like Doug and I are doing. As the power is going through this field, this is a magnetic field and it's revolving around here. And it's sucking this around. Of course, electric motors need electricity. So their history begins with the earliest electrical experimenters. In 1824, Michael Faraday patented his direct current, or DC motor. In 1888, the eccentric genius Nikola Tesla patented his alternating current, or AC motor. Today we use both. If it runs on batteries, it's a DC motor. If it plugs into the wall, it's an AC motor. Tesla was the first one who introduced the concept of alternating current where you would change the polarity back and forth as 60 times or 50 times a second as it was and uh, Edison didn't believe in that and Edison actually fired Tesla and he went to work for uh, George Westinghouse Tesla was right alternating current could be transmitted over miles and miles and there were significant limitations for direct current transmission distribution systems George Westinghouse acquired the patents for Tesla's alternating current system and in 1891 installed the world's first high-voltage AC transmission line in California, connecting San Antonio Canyon with Pomona and San Bernardino. In 1894, Westinghouse began manufacturing another one of Tesla's inventions, the AC motor. Early electric motors were used to power some of the very first cars, along with steam engines and internal combustion engines, which used an ignited fuel like gasoline to propel a piston up and down. I don't think anyone knew, uh, you know, at least for the first decade or more of the automobile's existence as, as to who was going to win out. Around 1912, the internal combustion engine finally did win, ironically because of the addition of an electric motor. It was called the starter. And it did just that, getting the pistons to start firing without throwing the drivers back out, or worse. Up until that time, you had to crank an engine to get it started. And it was not only difficult, but it was dangerous. It could take your, could really break bones in your arm. If one of those things jerked back on you, you could really hurt yourself. But with the electric starter, that changed the whole ball game and immediately signaled the demise of both the electric automobile and the steam-powered automobile. Like the hand crank, the starter's electric motor initiated the compression and combustion cycles necessary for the engine to run on its own. Some of the largest electric motors have been made for use in elevators. In 1933, Westinghouse built the world's fastest elevators for New York's Rockefeller Center. In 1972, Westinghouse installed the elevators in what was then the world's tallest building, the Sears Tower in Chicago. In the 1990s, the electric motor made an automotive comeback. When General Motors introduced the EV1, it was extremely lightweight with a strong, rigid frame and one of the most aerodynamic car bodies ever made. Some said it was built more like an airplane than a car. The highly advanced EV1 was a flop, and GM canceled production in 2000. As with all electric cars, its biggest problem was limited range between battery charges. If you're in a hurry to go someplace and you can only get 100 miles have to stop eight hours to charge, I mean, you might as well have a covered wagon. I think it's unlikely that in the next 10, 20 years, electric vehicles will compete with standard cars. Battery technology is just not good enough, and these batteries are expensive once you 
take them up to the scale that you need to store enough energy to drive a vehicle. Now, if they get a bit smaller and we're willing to have a limited range, it might be that electric vehicles will be interesting because they really would have no emissions where the car is being driven. Electric cars may not pollute when they're driven, but there's still pollution where the electricity is generated to charge their batteries, since most of it comes from power stations that burn fossil fuels. Because electric vehicles require either batteries with limited range or overhead power lines they can hook onto, they've been more popular for public rather than private transportation. Cities like Los Angeles got their first electric trolley buses in the early 1900s. And some cities still have them. Virtually all subway systems and light rapid transit systems use electric motors. And just why do we call them electric motors when we call the other machines that power our lives engines? Well, that's a matter of debate. And it's a debate that can keep scientists and engineers amused for hours. They sometimes refer to it as the great engines versus motors debate. I don't think there's a clear answer. Technically, we use the word engine for a device that takes energy from some source, like fuel, and converts it into power that we can use to drive something. Engines versus motors. In my personal opinion, I think that an engine, when I think of engines, I think of heat engines. I'm a thermodynamicist. We talk about heat engines. There are many inconsistencies even within the industry with regard to nomenclature. The things that I would not would call motors as opposed to engines would be primarily things like electric motors. And how do you explain outboard motors which almost always have engines in them? Very good question. Uh, I never said we were consistent in how we use those words. In the automotive industry, a motor is an electrical machine, an engine is an internal combustion machine. Then how did Detroit get to be Motor City? <laughs> Another very good question.